good morning to everybody but i will first i will show you the slides in the first slide can you start the, the timer yeah and this uh, in the first slide the, you know, the field is normal and you can see the man with bag and car but in the second slide with the field effect it is all lost you have already seen these photographs how the you know, glaucoma creates the problem in our day to day life now in, this is evaluated by the perimetry perimetry is the standard method you, you used to measure the patient visual function systematically throughout their field of vision the device used to perform this evaluation is called perimeters the is special extent of the visual field of a person defined as a three dimensional area in which the person can see at the direction of fixation without head and eye movement the tracker has defined as this field is as an island of vision surrounded by the sea of blindness as you see that with what one eye it is a monocular vision the, and with the both eyes in the uh, visible for information of the central 6 degree is processed by both eye and, and this give allows the stereo activity and depth perception as you already uh, heard about this normal field vision it, in the central field it is the central 30 degree area and the peripheral field is the rest of the area beyond the 30 degree at the outer extent of the field the sensitivity decreases from central to periphery so more the temporally sensitivity decreases with the age or location uh, more than in the periphery the scotoma are the area inside the border which is not seen any pathology along the visual field from retina to visual cortex usually results in the loss of vision perimetry is the current gold standard for glaucoma diagnosis and management it is also called for neurological condition related to the optic path nerve pathway it assesses the visual loss resulting in the retinal diseases like uh, retinoschisis and retinitis pigmentosa and also used for the visual ability assessment for the certification and for the drivers navigators as the field loss is one of the criteria for uh, defining blindness and in humphrey machine we have in a program like instrument binocular test which is used for this purpose this is a fam perimetric family tree showing the cl uh, the clinical methods of visual testing evolving in 1945 goldman perimeter has developed in 1975 the octopus perimeter developed and lastly in 84 the humphrey has developed in the second half of the second century marked the development of modern perimetry you have already seen this slide this is the anatomic basis of the visual field and the arcuate fibers are the most sensitive sensitive to the glaucomatous changes and and, the, and a stop at horizontal rafi gives to the nasal step but the macular fibers are the more resistant to the glaucomatous damage and thus retain the central vision till end what is the cause it is the no answer now you have already uh, heard about the uh, glaucoma field effects as i'm uh, i'm not showing de going in detail it is uh, at the end you will get the tubular vision and at last it is no uh, light perception now visual field defects is the depression means the reduced sensitivity of the retina it can be generalized both central and peripheral field are depressed and in peripheral depression it is only peripheral field is defect as an rp and when it is temporal contraction it is uh, with is the, with the aging are uh, these is what is scotoma scotoma is a reduced sensitivity of non seeing area in the visual field surrounded by the more sensitive area it can be absolute where there is a no absolute loss of vision uh, relative it is only uh, some wavelengths of light is uh, lost and the positive it is a dark spot in the visual field and the negative it is a blank area patient is unaware of it it can detect only by the examination these are the different types of visual fields defects these are the artifacts which had uh, came across due to anatomical, anatomical situation during perimetry these are neurological defects it depends upon the site of the lesion what are the method of estimating the extent of the visual field it may be kinetic or static in the kinetic perimetry it is on two dimension it is along the x and y axis it outlines the border of the visual field in which the object moves from non seeing area to seeing area here it is, it is supra threshold and it not always reduce producible and each early and subtle changes can be overlooked the, uh, the examples are the confrontation perimetry lister perimeter and goldman perimeter but now these are all obsolete now the, this is static perimeter it is three dimensional it uh, visual axis is measured in x y and z axis is finding out is finds out the threshold of the retina at various fixed point inside the visual field and it is reproducible and it can detect early and subtle changes humphrey octopus and friedman perimeters are this way and until now 
and nowadays it is the only way to measure the visual field. It has, this slide shows the difference between the kinetic and the static perimetry. Now, automated perimetry is a, uh, is a computer, when the computer takes over the many tasks of the examiner of presenting light stimuli at a well-defined location precisely and can flow the predetermined process regularly, it is automated perimetry. Automated perimetry is merely a computer-assisted examination, not that fully automatic. It is subjective test, so uh, the result depends upon the extent of patient's ability to perform the test. It is developed by the, uh, Frank Hausen in 1972. These are the advantages of automated perimetry. Now, these are three types of perimeters, and how it is taken, uh, it is shown in the slides. Patient, uh, the uh, environment should be distracted-free and dim, free, dim light, and patient should be in erect position, not to lean over the chin rest, as it would uh, cause the neck and back strain. And the, you know, whatever the correction needed for the, you know, the testing eye, it should be placed on the, you know, uh, in the trial frame. And the opposite eye, that is non-testing eye, should be closed. The normal field of vision will be described with two parameters, that is the extent of the field of vision, and, what, and uh, there is sensitivity to the light at every point in that field of vision. What is the sensitivity of light? It is the ability of the person to appreciate the light at lowest level. So if you uh, project a light, and patient can see, just see, then it is the patient's ability. If the bright light can perceive the, by the patient, that means the sensitivity of the retina is decreased. But if the low light is perceived by the retina, that means the person has greater sensitivity, retinal sensitivity. Now, what is the field of vision? Sensitivity is the highest in the central part and gradually it decreases in the periphery. To visualize the sensitivity across the visual field, it can be drawn in three-dimensional graph. X, Y represent the visual field location, and z-axis represents the sensitivity of the light in that uh, area of uh, two dimension. Since the representing, uh, it represents the hill of vision, it is called uh, the hill of vision. Area within the hill of vision represents the area of seeing, and area outside the hill of vision, it is the non-seeing area. Now, uh, during perimetry, the patient is asked to fix the uh, a, for a point, and the light is, is given to, and the stimulus is given to one point, and when the patient just see the light, it uh, push, it push the button, and the, uh, it responds to it, and this is the threshold. It, uh, patient first uh, uh, given one point, and then it is point in many t points in the visual field, and if you join the all points, you can get this uh, hill of vision, at, uh, <coughs> and uh, thus with the hill of vision is drawn. Now, what are the factors stimulating the visibility of light? There are five factors, the stimulus size, background illumination, color of stimulation, and stimulation duration, and brightness of the stimulus. For the size, the Goldman 3 is the standard size for the all perimeters. But sometimes in the macular testing, the, it can be uh, increased to size V. These are the three, five sizes. We just uh, we use three uh, size three. That's a, uh, that sustains the angular angle of 40.43 degree. The background illumination remains constant, and the color of the stimulus it is always white. The stimulus duration it is uh, 200 millisecond, and uh, stimulus intensity is, it is changed continuously with the use of attenuated filters. Attenuation of the light is expressed in logarithmic unit. For Humphrey it is 10,000 accessible, and the uh, octopus it is 4,000 accessible. And the minimum intensity of the Humphrey is the one uh, ASB, and the octopus it is 0.4 ASB. Now, but the, it is important to mention that during the entire period size, color, and duration of the stimulus along with the background stimulus will remain constant while the light intensity of the stimulus varies. Now, it is a very important slide. Unit is, uh, the light in intensity is usually expressed in abstable and the retinal intensity in the decibel. Abstable is, is inversely proportional to each other it, uh, and the higher the abstable and lower the decibel. And similarly, Abstable is an absolute unit, and so 100 abstable in for the both pampery and perimetry and octopus, it is same. And relative, it is, but decibel is a relative unit, and it depends upon the maximum intensity of light projected for each perimeter. So higher the uh, brightest light, value, so as the brightest light varies, decibel value also varies with the same intensity in both pampery uh, uh, and the octopus. Hence, the field out, uh, field, field charted in the decimal on the two pay machine uh, is not compared accurately, and data could not be interchangeable. 
So it is a, uh, just one, just to mention the one decibel is equal, is equal to 10,000 and 10 is 1,000, 20 is 100, and 30 is 10, and 40 is one decibel. So this shows uh, the, as the brightness increases, the decibel decreases. And the retinal sensitivity also, uh, with the bright light, if the patient sees the bright light, uh, just see the bright light, it has meant that the sensitivity is decreased. So we, with, abstable, in, with increased abstable, the brightness is decreased and also the retinal sensitivity is also decreased. The, the why understanding of decibel is important because the, in, or in the, this uh, uh, printout we show that the, all areas are usually in, it is uh, shown in the decibels. What is threshold value? It is particular it, for a particular intensity of light. Yeah. If it is projected 100 times and it is the appreciated 50 times, it is on 50 times it is emitting. This is called threshold value. And if the stimulus seen 90 percent of time, it is called supra threshold. And if it is 15 percent, it is called infra threshold. Yeah. In this picture, it is uh, for, for, you know, 24 decibel is the threshold value, and it is uh, 26 yeah. is a uh, infra threshold, and it is uh, around uh, 20. It is a supra threshold. Uh, Doctor Agarwal, yes. uh, can you? Uh, yes, just one minute. Now, this slide shows how the uh, fall of retinal threshold uh, gives the retinal sensitivity loss. If we, uh, there is a loss of uh, 3 decibel, then we, our retinal sensitivity decreases by <coughs> half, and if it is 5 decibel loss, then it is 1 the retinal sensitivity loss by 3. Now, in the Humphrey parameter, there is a stat pack. The stat pack is a, is a uh, software which is commonly analyzed. Uh, uh, what it is uh, the huge amount of number in the, is stored in the computer and this analyzes the pattern and compare the stored data and perform all kind of analysis. Software includes the data collected in the field that is point pattern and test strategy and interpretation of the test spec that is a, a single field analysis and guided <coughs> progressive, progressive analysis. What is p-value? P-value is the probability percentage. It is uh, assigned as a key, uh, is a key p p picture. If it is p-value is less than 1%, that is, defect is seen only in the 1% of the normal population. Changes in this rate being the normal in 1%. Defect is not seen in the 99% of the normal population. The, beside the stat pack, there are few other advanced techniques that swap, FTT, NDP, and uh, HPRP. But this does not, uh, the, uh, out, uh, it, uh, this is only the complementary test. It is not uh, 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 just. Uh, it is not uh, give the uh, 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 standard field analysis. Uh, is not we have to hand over the hall by uh, 10:25. Okay. The okay. three speakers. The data collection of fields are the point pattern, where the points were located and how it is tested. It is it is a testing strategy. Already you have heard about that. These are all already for the in testing, which is central field, are generally uh, called for. For peripheral field, it is only the retinal uh, diseases. Now, strategy testing, it is uh, supra threshold. It is uh, for the screening purposes. And it's a threshold testing. What we do is a full test, uh, start, you know, fast patch, theta, and theta fast. It's already been described by our uh, previous speakers. Now, thank you. Thank you to all.